uh, the Solution Design Group uh, in Orlando, Florida. Um, that's my website and Twitter handle. <coughs> and this talk is about writing Groovy DSLs, or domain-specific languages. Specifically, I'll talk about the features that Groovy has um, that support writing domain-specific languages. Um, whether you use that term or not, um, these are just some really great features for doing some cool things. All right. Can everyone hear me okay? I think so. Okay, so here's the agenda. We're gonna talk about command chains, uh, name parameters, operator overloading, categories, extension modules, uh, using closures with the delegates, and property missing, method missing, um, Groovy scripts and Groovy shell, um, some of the new features in Groovy 3, as well as some existing common DSLs that you probably have encountered. <coughs> so command chains, the idea of command chains is they allow you to make parentheses free uh, fluent method calls. In other words, uh, it, if the, the type returned from the method has methods on it, and then you can call those methods without parentheses. And if they take one or more parameters. Uh, so if anyone has any questions at any point in time, please raise your hand, and I'll try to get to them. Um, so I'm gonna, I'll talk about some features, and then we'll take a couple of demo breaks in there. <coughs> okay, so the at name parameters annotation is mainly to give your ID hints for the uh, parameter names within a map parameter. So the way you would do that is, for example, here I have a method called task, and it has a uh, map parameter, as you can see. And I'm using the at name parameters annotation with a list of at uh, name parameter annotations. So you can describe not only the name of the key, but also the type that it expects. So in this case, the name is expected to be a string. Um, do last is a closure, and do first is a closure, for example. You can also override operators. So here I have the list of this is most of the operators you can overload in Groovy. On the left side and on the right side is the method name you would use in order to do that. So I'll give some examples of that in a minute here. Okay. So here's, who here saw Endgame already? Can you see it? Yeah, a few, okay, a few hands enough. Okay. Okay, actually, I need to go over here. All right. So let's start with command chains. So for this example, I'm doing a sort of a Gradle-like task. Uh, but in this case, I want to use, I'm demonstrating command chains, so this task has these fluent methods that each of them returns a task here. So you'll see here, do last, it expects a closure, and it sets the value and then returns this. So you've probably seen, um, you may have seen a pattern like this before. So this allows, typically, um, you could set values using a chain 
and instead of having to use multiple lines of it, it makes uh, using interface or an API easier to do so. So I have, so this is an inner class of tasks. So the actual class is named command chains. And within this class, I have a list of tasks. And let's see, I have this task method, which just creates a new task and adds it to the list. And then also just to demonstrate using name parameters, I have a different method named task that can also create a task and add it to the list. So to demonstrate that, I have a Spock specification here. I might be able to run. Let's see, okay, might not work. Okay, so this is creating a task using this DSL. <coughs> so this is the simplest version. So when I I'm also using the with method here, so I'm, this just means within this um this block here, I can refer to methods or properties of the command chains class, or this instance of it right here, CC, without specifying it. So this is calling task on that object. All right, and then I verify that the size is equal to one, so I need to add that task. So here's an example of using task chains. So here I actually create the task I set the type, and I set the do last. So all in one line, and all without using any parentheses here. So that's just an example of a way you can make a really clean API. And likewise, using the name parameters here, I can say, set the name, and because I'm using IntelliJ here, all right, if I start to type name, I don't know if you can see that, it actually is auto-completing for me, presentation mode. All right, there we go. So I can say, name my task. And if I just type T, then I already get the first item in there in this type, or T Y. So. So. Okay. Okay, so the other thing I want to talk about is the ability to add operators. So one of the things that you might want to do, for example, is you want to create your own list that um, that works like a, a groovy list, but is backed by an immutable list. So here I'm using um, the Google Guava library. So I've got an immutable list, and the from method is just a way of creating a new instance of this list. And I've implemented plus for adding items, or I can also add another uh, list to this list. Or I can add or a groovy guava list <coughs> as well. And then I can subtract items from it. Right? Because it's an immutable list, I have to actually, I'm generating a new list each time that I do one of these operations. 
And then I've also implemented git at. So here I'm just calling list to get at that index. All right, so. I'll just run that test in the background. So I should be able to, so I have a, a Spock specification for this as well. I should be able to create the list, so that's demonstrating that. And then I should be able to add items using either the plus operator here or the left shift operator. So I'm doing both those things. So in this case, I've got a, um, although I'm implementing a immutable list here, uh, this could be, you know, anything you wanted to. So, anything where you'd want to uh, implement so that those operators work, you can implement it that way. And the and by the way, this return type could didn't doesn't necessarily have to be the same class type as the method is defined as. So if you wanted to, you know, for example, return a different class from that, you could. So I'll actually def show an example of that later. <coughs> but when you return the same class, it just some like makes sense in, in most cases. <laughs> or in this case, it makes sense. Um, this is an, uh, another example of implementing operators. And there's some other operators in here, like bitwise and a gate. Um, so that's uh, using the tilde, I believe. And let's see what else. And also, if you implement a call method on an object, you can actually use that object um, and call it much like a, you would a closure. So in this example here, you know what? cancel that. This example, um, I'm creating a, a class is called thing, and it pretty simply just add, has a name and adds strings to the name based on whatever you call on it. So if I were to say t left shift e2, then I'm sure the, the name or the two string value that is T left, sh left shift T2, and so on. Now, and here's the tilde operator I was talking about earlier. Can everyone see that? All right. Okay. Looks like I'm getting guesses. Okay. What else? Okay. And then here, you can see that I'm calling. Uh, I'm calling. The or I'm using it much like a closure, and that actually calls the call method over here that I've defined um, based on the, the type here being thing of the parameter. Yeah. Let me see if I can run those tests just to verify that, in fact, all of the tests will work. Hopefully. Okay, so the build was successful. There you go. Okay, so the next thing I'm talking about is uh, categories and extension modules. So with categories, um, such as the time category that's comes with Groovy. You use the, 
use, and then the class of your category within parentheses, and then a block of code here. And within that block, you can refer to, um, or you can use all of the methods within that category as if they are members of that class, uh, that of the first parameter, members of the class of the first parameter of those methods. So, and I'll show that in a minute. So, unlike using meta class, this allows static compilation to still work. Right, so, <coughs> if you want to use at compile static on your class, because you like to do that, and it you know, gives you good performance, then you can do that. Extension modules are similar to category, except that when included as a library, um, and when you've set it up correctly, it will work, it basically adds those methods everywhere within your project um, to those classes. Um, and it'll also work within your tests, which I'll demonstrate that in a minute. So closures, so I showed you using um, with before, I think. Um, which allows you to refer all the methods and properties of an object within that given closure. And you may be familiar with use, uh, actually setting the delegate to a closure. So when you do, and you can use this, um, when you set the delegate to the closure and you use this at delegates to annotation with the type of the class you're using as a delegate, that tells the compiler in your ID the, the class you're using the delegate, so what methods and properties are available within that closure. Right, so that it will compile, it'll compile statically, no problem, and allows for auto completion, which is really nice. Okay, so I'll go back to the demo for this one. Oh, sorry, that is not it. All right. So. so here I got my extension module. So what you do here is I got to apologize for the text being this small, but within your source main resources here of this project, I've got a, a folder metainf <coughs> slash services, and then within that is a file named org.codehouse.groovy.runtime.extension module. And within that file, you define the module name, uh, the module version, which is just to uh, ensure that you don't include two uh, different versions, two different extension modules, and then which are your extension classes and which are your static extension classes, if you have any. So in this case, I have an extension class named my DSL extension. All right. Um, in this case, I've written the code in Groovy. It's a Groovy file, but it actually it doesn't have to be. It could be Java as well. Um, so, in many cases, um, you could do that. I think things like uh, Gradle are written in Java, for example. So here I have a two ggList method, and the first parameter is an iterable type. <coughs> so this means that 
when this is included in your project, everything that's, that implements iterable will now have available to it a to dg list method, which then converts to that type I showed you earlier, the groovy guava list. Okay, before I go to that. So I did, I mentioned the time category earlier, so. So time category um, is built in type, so it's, you import that and that allows you to say, when you say use time category, you can say one week or 10 hours, and it actually converts it and allows that to work within this closure. So, There you go. So since I have that extension module now, wherever there's a list, for example, I now have available to me the 2GG list method. Right? So for here, instead of saying guava list or groovy guava list from list, I can just say list dot 2GG list. Right? And that'll do the same thing. Did anyone follow that? Okay. Right. So, trying to say, so this is another um this example shows another way to use uh, command chains. So I have a I have a dragon class with a dragon builder. Right? And there's um, this create dragon method, which returns a new dragon builder. And with that one, I have with age, and then here I have a method name called named. So I can set the age, and then I can say named. And as soon as I pass in that name, the return type here you see is a dragon. So that allows like a short, and oh, it would be a sort of a custom builder way of, of uh, building objects. So here I call dragon dot create dragon with age, and then I say named smog. So then since that's returning a dragon, you see the return type here is dragon. All right. Okay. So property missing and method missing. So these are more useful only when you have dynamic code, Be, um, since the way it works is if 
there's a, if you're referencing a property that's not there, but you have defined the property missing method on that type, it will call that method. This can be an combined with the with a delegate or a with, or using a script base, which I'll show later, that would could allow on the fly reference of you know any anything at all. So arbitrary names. If you have a method that takes in a string name and a value parameter that can implement assignment <coughs> within Groovy and method missing in a similar way uh, will be called when you are calling a method that isn't there. The name is the name of the method and the second parameter here, args, will be an array of whatever objects were called, maybe zero to n. Uh, um, it'll be an array of size zero to n, however many parameters were called on that method. And uh, yeah, one more. So Groovy scripts. So Groovy script, as you're probably aware, you can call. You don't need a class. You don't need a main method. You can just start writing code within a Groovy script and run it. Uh, one of the ways that you can run a script is using the Groovy shell, which is um, a thing within the Groovy GDK that you can use, and allows you to customize the Groovy runner or the runtime. So you can do things like uh, add imports automatically that are available to you or that will be available to you in the script. Compiler configurations, bindings. Um, you can change the script base class, which is essentially the class of, uh, behind the script. And supply your own class loader as well. So for this one, I have an example of running the Groovy shell here with the import customizer. So the first thing you do, okay, first of all, this is actually a, a JUnit test. Um, so you can, you don't, re it doesn't require you to, you know, write this in Groovy. This would be written in Java. So this code, you create a binding, create compiler configuration. I'm adding a star imports of this package, which is com.nmldavis.kim, which is short for chemistry. Adding, uh, adding those to the compiler config, and then I initialize the shell. And I find this file here chemistry.groovy and then I evaluate it. So chemistry is a DSL essentially that I created for um, creating compounds or elements and then doing operations on them. So the first thing here is you have an execute block, right, or this method name exec, -E which takes in a block, closure, and you see how the delegates to chemistry annotation here. 
So that's telling everyone the, the delegate, the type of the delegate here. And I actually set the delegate and call the closure. Now the interesting part is this property mes missing method, which takes the name and creates a new compound based on that name. And if there's only one element, it just simply returns uh, the element. So that's all this is, that's all this is doing right here. <coughs> so to give an example of that, right here's my chemistry.groovy file. So I'm actually creating <coughs> this is the chemistry uh, or chemical composition of acetaminophen, so C8H9 and 2 So what that does is if you go within the compound class here, is it actually takes that string and then you're going to here. It finds all the matches of this regular expression here, so uh, a letter followed by a number, and then goes through that and creates an element based on those matches. And then separately, I've defined uh, the atomic names and an atomic table over here. So I won't go through all of that, but this defines all of the names of all the elements on you know, the periodic table. And then the table here is going to define their atomic weights. So so we go back to here. There we go. Where I actually evaluate it. So I can actually evaluate that file, and I get the result of that evaluation, and I'm asserting that it was 25. So if you were to look at that, it's the final number of, here I'm calculating the number of hydrogen atoms. So as I described earlier, you're able to uh, override operators. So here that's what this is doing. So I'm combining property missing. So here it's an H. That's not a property defined anywhere. Right? It just using the, it goes through the property missing method, uh, determines that that's an element. And then because this is a compound, it, I've overrided the div or divide operation to actually return the number of those items in that compound. And I can also do something like here with the mod operation I can calculate the ratio of, so in this case, it's the atomic weight ratio of hydrogen atoms in that compound. So you might ask, where is that implemented? It's right here. So here's divide, <coughs> which simply gets the, uh, takes in an element and returns the uh, value at that key, and th this is elements as a map. If it's not there, it would turn zero. And the mod operation here calls this method percentage, right? Which goes through, and I build atomic weights, and divides that through there. Yeah. 
Any questions so far on that? That's kind of a lot. So finally, I've implemented, uh, you may have heard of a elephant-based build tool. Um, so I've taken um, and tried to implement something similar. Probably not exactly the same, but this is called Pachyderm. And you notice that it extends script here. So what, what that allows you to do is uh, change the base class of your script when you're running uh, using that groovy shell I showed you earlier. So we'll be able to change that to be this class, Pachyderm, right? So within here I have a project which is using our command chains object. I've implemented a property missing which will look for any task with that given name. If it finds it, it will return it. If it won't find, doesn't find it, it returns a new task by calling the task method. I have a method missing implementation here. So that allows for excuse me, <coughs> that allows you to say any name here. So when you use that, when you have defining a task, and then you're calling a method on it, and then if the first <coughs> argument is a closure, then it calls this method here. <coughs> if it did not find a closure, then I'm just delegating back to property missing at that point. And I've got here uh, another method uh, called task, which uses uh, delegates to annotation. And it, given that name, it finds a task of that name, actually is it creating a task of that name, then setting that as the delegate and calling the closure. So in that case, all of the fields or properties and methods of, that, of task or task object will be available to that closure, right? And then finally, I just have some bookkeeping stuff down here. Um, you have to implement this run method when you extend uh, the yeah when you extend the script cl uh, class. So we go back to the groovy shell test here. So here I'm set, I'm using add star imports. which may or may not be necessary. And I'm setting the script bat, uh, base class here to pachyderm, thing I just showed you. <coughs> also, uh, setting a variable here just to demonstrate that you can do that. Setting the name to groovy test. And then at the end down here, I'm actually asserting, I'm getting the context from that shell is asserting that that was changed to great conf build <coughs> after evaluating the file. Any questions before I go to the, that file? 
so far. Okay. So on task.groovy, I set there, I'm setting the name. So that's the variable that I set in the binding. Right. So I don't, you notice I don't have to use, I'm not defining it as a new variable, I'm just referring to it right here. <coughs> I'm creating a task called test. And within, so this is calling uh, the closure here. The delegate to this closure is going to be the task. So I can call the depends on method that we define in the task class. I can call the do first method we define in the task class as well. And then there's a option. This is a, a separate way of defining a task where I have a name in as an actual string and then a closure here. All this code is available, by the way. I'll, at the end, I'll, I'll tell you where to locate it at. <coughs> so this is just the build file. For actually running this. Okay, so here I'm actually running the test. So I'm running this um, test, running Groovy Shell test. So this is uh, actually going through, and after all the things I've done, I'm evaluating the file. <coughs> so you can see the test passed. So I've got two tasks in my task list. And I'm asserting that their names are what I expect them to be. <laughs> and I'm actually right here getting the second task and calling this the do last closure. Right, so if you'll go back to this, you'll see that do last here prints got here. Right, so that would be like as if I actually ran the task that was implementing this. So I run it out, and then you can see down there in the output, it's printed it out. So we know that everything worked as expected. So in Groovy 3, uh, Lambda, so some of the things that you may or may not be aware of, Lambda expressions and the double colon uh, for method references from Java are now supported, or will be. New operators, not in, not instance of, Elvis assignment, and uh, safe array uh, dereference. So some of the existing uh, DSLs out there are things like the JSON builder. So here I'm just I've got some code that calls the using the JSON builder for creating JSON. And in the yellow highlighted text, I'm showing how this works, essentially, what's going on in the background. 
right? So everything that the Groovy GDK uses is available to you, right? So you can do. So I've got method missing here, person, which and a closure. Um, when it's a, where it says first name Adam, it's calling method missing first name Adam, right? Or name of the method, first name, parameters are Adam, and so on. And as we kind of talked about, Gradle in a similar fashion. Uh, Groove CSS, so that's where I learned a lot of this, so implementing a little library for converting, or a DSL for writing CSS in Groovy. So it uses all those features we talked about. Command chains, operator overloading, so on. So that's it. There's the code. Um, it's all available on GitHub. If you want to type the big long one, there's a shorter uh, bit.ly link there. So, thank you for listening. Are there any questions? So far? No? No? Okay. All right, thank you. Okay.